Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present to you Kate Regan with the request that you confer on her the degree Doctor of Laws honoris causa. The decision by Council and Senate to order this degree has, taken, has been taken on the grounds of the following considerations. Ladies and gentlemen, Kate Regan gained prominence when she was appointed as a judge of the then newly established Constitutional Court at the age of 37. In addition, she was one of only two female judges for the first 13 years of the court's existence. Yes, she made an enormous contribution to justice for South Africans in general and for women and vulnerable groups in particular. Dames en heren, met opleiding van de Universiteit van Kaapstad in Sydney, begin praktiseer Keito Regan as procureur in Johannesburg, voorzet Afrika's oorgang tot democratie, en is sy betrokke by rechtswerk wat politieke transformatie bevorder. Na haar PhD aan die Londense School for Economie, keer sy terug en word onder meer stichters lid van een navorsingsproject oor rechte, ras en geslag in die Instituut vir Rechtsontwikkeling, albei aan die Universiteit van Kaapstad. Gedierende hierdie tyd word sy een actieve kampvechter vir vrouwerechte en geslagsgelijkheid. From her appointment as Young Constitutional Court Jurist in 1994 up until her retirement in 2007, 2009, Judge Regan left an indelible mark with a range of leading judgments. Many of these aided the battle against unfair discrimination against women and vulnerable groups. Examples include the directional judgment in Prince Lewis versus Van der Linde, which he co-authored and which entrenched the connection between the right of equality and dignity in South Africa's administration of justice. In a dissenting judgment in Minister of Home Affairs versus Fari, which dealt with the regulation of homosexual marriage, she sharply criticized the court's referral of the matter to Parliament instead of granting immediate relief. The minority judgment, along with Judge Albie Sachs in S versus Jordan, described the criminalization of sex work as unfair gender-based discrimination and thus unconstitutional. Judge Regan is held in high repute outside the Constitutional Court also. In 2008, the Secretary General of the United Nations appointed her as Chair of the Internal Justice Council, which recruits judges for the United Nations Dispute and Appeals Tribunals. She's an ad hoc judge in the Namibian High Court, Chair of the International Monetary Fund's Administrative Tribunal, and member of the World Bank Sanctions Board. This honorary professor of UNISA and UCT has also remained academically active. Her article, Text Matters, some reflections on the forging of a new constitutional jurisprudence in South Africa, in particular, has established the text of the Constitution as an important determinant of court's jurisprudence. Her contribution to civil society includes having chaired the Kailitsha Commission of Inquiry into Policing. So, Mr. Chancellor, I hereby request that you confer the degree Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa on Judge Kate Regan for a fine and progressive mind and her unwavering commitment to the law both within and outside the Constitutional Court, which has seen justice prevail for particularly women and vulnerable groups of society. I hereby confer on you, Kate Regan. The degree Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. Well done. Thank you. Meneer de Kanselier, Meneer Director, Collega's, Gasten, dit is my baie groot eer en voorig om hierdie heildronk in te stel op Dr. Kate O'Regan. I met Dr. O'Regan when we were activists in the struggle uh, the women's struggle when the National Women's Coalition was formed just before 1994. What impressed me about her was her clarity of vision and her commitment to put gender equality on the transition agenda. There was an unwavering support for how the law can be used to bring about change and transformation. Gender activists were overjoyed by her appointment as a judge to the Constitutional Court and one of only two women, and she did not disappoint us nor did she disappoint the citizens of South Africa. Kate Regan was the youngest judge appointed to the Constitutional Court and she served there until 2009 where her term came to an end. 
She holds degrees from the University of Cape Town, the University of Sydney, and a PhD from the London School of Economics, where she focused on the right to strike. Many of her landmark rulings as a judge contributed to change conditions of inequality for the better. In matters of discrimination law, she co-authored Prince Lou versus Van der Linde, which established the connection between the right to equality and dignity and wrote a unanimous judgment in 2003, follow up to the Satchville versus the President of the Republic of South Africa. In, in the Minister of Home Affairs versus Furi, she strongly criticized the majority for referring the regulation of same-sex marriage to Parliament rather than providing immediate relief. In the State versus Jordan, co-authored with Albi Sachs, they held that the criminalization of sex work and not its solicitation unfairly discriminates on the basis of gender and is therefore unconstitutional. The South African Commission for Gender Equality drew on this judgment to justify decriminalization of sex work. Her abilities and commitment to justice was also noticed outside South Africa. In 2008, she was appointed by the Secretary General of the United Nations as chairperson of the newly established Eternal, Internal Justice Council of the United Nations. The council was established to help ensure independence, professionalism, and accountability in the internal administration of justice in the United Nations. One of the primary goals of the Council is to find suitable candidates to appoint as judges of the United Nations Dispute Tribunal and the UN Appeals Tribunal. Selecting Kate to this position shows the high esteem in which her work and legal contributions are held. Dr. O'Regan has continued to be involved in academic work while still a judge. She's an honorary professor at UNISA as well as the University of Cape Town. She has been an honorary consulting editor of the South African Law Report since 1997. In an important article that appeared in the Modern Law Review with the title Text Matters, Some Reflections on the Forging of a New Constitutional Jurisprudence in South Africa, she argues that the text of the Constitution is an important determinant of the court's jurisprudence in relation to the institutional structures and its Bill of Rights. She argues that the text itself provides guiding principles for interpretation and that judicial reasoning should show substantial engagement with the text. Next year we will be celebrating 20 years of the Constitution and I hope that we will remember this message, especially in the very difficult time this country has entered since yesterday. She is also very active in civil society and chaired the Kailicha Commission of Inquiry into the breakdown of policing in Kailicha with Busi Pikoli. Dr. Regan is also an hoc judge of the Namibian, Namibian Supreme Court. She's also the president of the Internal, International Monetary Fund Administrative Tribunal and a member of the World Bank Sanctions Board. Dr. O'Regan is considered one of the most successful judges of the Constitutional Court, as well as one of its most industrious and progressive members. Judge Edwin Cameron, who got his honorary doctorate today as well, her colleague has said that she is one of the finest legal minds ever appointed as a judge in South Africa. By bestowing an honorary doctorate on Kate O'Regan, Stellenbosch University gives the highest recognition to her contribution to justice in South Africa and globally. It affirms her as a judge who has made great contribution in establishing justice for South Africa in general and women in particular. Chancellor, Rector, members of the uh, Senate of the University of Stellenbosch, fellow honorary graduates, and fellow graduates who are graduating with your PhDs. In some ways, I feel like uh, uh, somebody who has got a degree for which I haven't really worked. I know those of you who have done a doctorate and have graduated this week with a doctorate have really worked for your degrees. It is an extraordinarily difficult road, and I congratulate you. I'm proud to be sharing this moment with you. I'm very honoured by the University of Stellenbosch's bestowal of the degree upon me, and I, I explain it to myself as really a recognition of the importance of the Constitutional Court. And there are really three things I want to talk about today, just like Edwin. The three things I want to talk about are institutions, science and knowledge, and values. Because in many ways, I think these are the three things for which a university stands, 
and for which our constitutions stand and which we need to bear in mind going forward. They also, I think, are well represented by the honorary graduates today. Um, all, all five of us have either been involved with institutions or involved in issues relating to science and knowledge or involved in the issue of values. And I think these are three very important things to bear in mind. So institutions are important, as the rector said, as the, as the chancellor said, because actually they persist. They are what makes human endeavor move from generation to generation. They are rarely perfect. Isaiah Berlin said, out of the crooked timber of humankind, no straight thing is ever wrought. And institutions are like that. They have problems, they have difficulties, but they can move from generation to generation when they honestly acknowledge that, when they face them, when they discuss them, when they think about them, when they move forward thoughtfully and in an engaged way and in treating people with respect in that project. And I've been fortunate to be involved in many institutions in my life. The universities I've engaged with, above all the Constitutional Court, what an extraordinary privilege to be at the start of an institution of that sort with the colleagues that I had, with the depth of value and wisdom and intellectual caliber that was there. And I'm sure that institutions are what matter and what might matter in South Africa. I also think institu institutions matter globally. I've had the fortune since 2009 to work with a range of international institutions, including the United Nations and the two Bretton Woods institutions, as well as several large NGOs. And we are indeed one globe, one planet, one humanity. And going forward, our work in international institutions, which in some ways has all the difficulties we have in national institutions, but in an old dimension bigger, are very important for all of us to contribute to going forward. The next issue I want to talk about is science and knowledge. And I'm really honored to be getting an honorary degree with Dr. Le Hochler. And I thought I'd tell you a story. When I was appointed to the Kailiche Commission, it became very clear that one of the biggest contestations were, was how many people live in Kailiche. And that's not a question that we can afford not to answer. Because if you're concerned about delivery, if you're concerned about attending to people's needs, you need to know how many there are. If I start from just being somebody cooking supper in the evening, I want to know are all the kids going to be there and 14 friends and three cousins? or else oh, it's just going to be four. And Kailich in many ways is much the same. And there was huge contestation. And it was just after 2011 census had come out. And there was, uh, as Dr. Lahochla will remember, a lot of noise at the, my uh, uh, original uh, alma mater, the University of Cape Town, about the reliability of that data. And I can tell you that the NGOs that came before us completely disbelieved the data. The data suggested that came out of uh, uh, of the census that there were 400,000 people living in Kailicha. But many of the NGOs thought we would be talking about a million. So we sat down and we decided, well, what, in what ways can we verify this data? This is something that we need to know. And we looked at a whole range of cross-cutting data. So not only what census, the census had looked at, what Stats had looked at, but we looked at the number of social grants. We looked at the number of children registered in schools. We looked at the number of people registered to vote. And every single one of those pieces of data pointed at the numbers that census, the census had produced. And so to this day, I encounter NGOs who say, you're wrong on the numbers. And I say, no, I'm not. Stats SA is right. It's in the region of half a million people now, given growth. And that is really important. I do a lot of work on looking at rights around Africa. And we are deeply blessed to have the census and the data we have because it is the first tool of policymakers. How many people do we have to service? Where are they? What is the demographic pattern? Without that reliable census data, it is almost impossible to have a stable response and a good policy response to social needs. And that, in many ways, is what a university is about. It's about knowledge and science creation. And I do think we underestimate the value of that in our broader community. We also have moved into a time when the notion of verification of data is not often admired. I know this from dealing with students in this year. There's a sort of impatience with the careful, meticulous work that goes into producing data, with analyzing what are proper methods for determining data. 
And I think a university stands for this. It's an enormous blessing for a society when it has institutions that can verify and engage in data production. University of Stellenbosch is a fine example of that. And so, I think, is Stats SA. We are very fortunate uh, to have Stats SA. And that leads me to the third thing, which is values. It's very easy, I think, to slide over values in our modern world. But values are actually what hold institutions together, what hold societies together. And it's difficult in a secular, uh, very noisy modern society to assert the importance of values. But here we are so fortunate to have a constitutional text which in its very first clause talks about the founding values of our society. And those founding values are an extremely important part of the jurisprudence in the Constitutional Court in thinking about the problems that we have in South Africa. We're really blessed to have this very rich source of values. And so I would suggest to you today that thinking of what really matters in South Africa, it is thinking about institutions. It's thinking about the importance of knowledge and science. And it's most importantly thinking about the values that we must promulgate and share in order to make our society possible. Thank you very much.